G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and in this video we're going to be looking at topologic cell complexes and we're going to be featuring a presentation by Wassim Yabi. Um, so we've done a previous video so I do recommend you watch that as well where we looked at handling some different processes um, that I'd been exploring in Rhino Inside and that Wassim had been exploring in Dynamo using his package called Topologic. Um, so previously I looked at how to deal with merging overlapping lines um, in the case of room boundaries to turn them into area separation lines um, using Rhino Inside. Uh, the problem was that we ended up with a lot of overlapping segments um, that couldn't be processed into a way that we could generate all the area lines without generating a whole bunch of warnings uh, from all the overlapping area lines. Um, so in this case, uh, we're going to be looking at the Topologic Dynamo package um, piloted by Wasim Yabi. Um, and his team basically works on these packages um, and other things as well as researchers and educators. Um, and they, they look at geometry in a different way um, that can ena enable some more analytical workflows that standard geometry doesn't offer us. So in this case, Wesson Yabi, um, he's an educator as well um, from Cardiff in UK. And he, he has a really interesting presentation style and a, be a better way of describing the topologic workflow than what I can. So in this case, I wanted to host his content on the channel. Um, to give you access to, to a better a better way of looking at it. So I'd like to thank him, obviously, for being being in this episode. Um, so Topologic uh, is essentially is looking at the approach of topology. So turning a lot of geometry classes that maybe Dynamo has, such as points, curves, surfaces, etc., and instead reconstructing them in a different way. So in this case, vertexes, edges, which combine to form wires like polycurves, um, which can then define faces when they're closed, which can define shells, sort of like polysurfaces, and then cells, sort of like solids, but different. And then you can go beyond to make more abstract classes, in this case, a cell complex, um, which in this case is a set of cells where the relationship exists between all the cells connected in the complex. I believe one thing that's important between them is they need to share adjacent faces. And this is one thing um, that our workflow we researched together enabled in his cell complex approach. And then also you can look at lots of geometry together as a cluster. So it's a really interesting way. And the thing that's really important is that each of these pieces of geometry that are now topology can understand all of their, their inherited uh, topological classes. So a cell can always be deconstructed back down to its vertices um, for analytical purposes. And this really enables some interesting workflows. So previously we looked at um, how we can resolve uh, such issues as trying to create um, enclosed shapes from a set of curves. But in this case, we're going to be looking at how to generate a cell complex via Wasm. I guess when I say we, it's, it's Wasm. <laughs> um, but in this case, um, just, just to note, there are some sample files available on the topologic.app website. Um, so do feel free to download and explore these as well as their Dynamo package um, if you're looking to sort of try and follow along with the workflow at home. And in this case, we'll be using the Autodesk Advanced Sample Project. Anyway, I'm going to hand it over to Wasim Yabi, um, and he'll show you how you can create a cell complex and just begin to analyze it um, using some interesting nodes from the from the Dynamo package of Topologic. Um, so over to Wasim. Hi, everyone. So in this video, I wanted to continue the workflow that we started uh, earlier by importing rooms from Revit, but I wanted to show you how to build a cell complex uh, in topologic that you can then use for all sorts of analysis because it has kind of adjacency information. So in the last video we ended up here where we just had a group of faces but they were not actually uh, interconnected yet in any way. It's a clean geometry which is good but they have not been extruded and they have not been connected. So in this video I wanted to, to do that. So uh, just to remind you we ended up with a list of wires here uh, from all of the uh, the previous kind of data that came in from Revit but that also included the circular columns so in the next step now what we need to do is try to remove these circular columns so what I did first is I flattened the list so I have these 81 wires and if you remember uh, from the last video, we had uh, 31 rooms. So you can see them here. Sorry, this is a bit slow today. Um, 31 rooms right there. 
So we should be able to get 31 wires at the very end of this process. So how do we do that? So uh, one way to do it is to take a look at the area, the kind of floor area that we are dealing with. And these columns are quite small. So when I look at this drawing, the columns are the smallest things here. So we can take a look at uh, the area of them. So we do face by wire. So we now we have 81 faces, that's fine. And then we can do a uh, area on it. So choose the topologic area for a face. So it's under face utility. So you'll find it under uh, utilities, face utility. And let's go ahead and run this and find out uh, what are these areas. So what you'll notice is that there are a lot of identical areas that are 70,685.84, etc., etc., and those repeat again and again. So obviously those are the columns. So what we can do is we can say uh, filter this list by areas that are greater than, let's say, 71,000, and I think we will catch everything else because everything else is significantly larger than this area. So we can go ahead and do a greater than, and we do a code block, and we just to give ourselves a bit of room to catch all the numbers, 71,000 should catch everything else. And run that, so that will give us a list of booleans, uh, whether true or false. So we will do a uh, list uh, filter by boolean mask and we give it this mask and we are going to use the actual uh, original wires the face was just used to calculate the areas so we are just going to use the actual wires to filter them and we run that so now if we put a watch panel on this we should get 31 wires and here we are we have exactly 31 wires so let's go ahead and visualize those and hide all the other faces and etc all the other wires so I'm going to hide excuse me the geometry one thing you will know about topology is that it doesn't draw anything to the screen it only draws when you do topology.geometry we did that on purpose so that we don't clutter the screen um, right, so we need to remove the original uh, rooms, I think. Let's see where they are. Um, is it this one? This one? No. This one? Where is it? Somewhere. I think it's center boundary. It's Okay, I think I have drawn the wires. I probably did geometry. It's probably hiding somewhere. There it is. So we're going to actually just delete that. And let's go ahead and do topology.geometry on the filtered wires. So those are clean wires. Now you might notice if you have sharp eyes that there are these two columns here. So what I found out is that they are what we call engaged columns. They are connected somehow for some reason. So they look like this. And actually they are treated as holes, like notches in this room. And there's nothing I can do about that. It's just exactly how this room is designed. There are these type of two notches and they will be voids. There's also a notch here. I don't exactly know what that is, but there is no room here. This is kind of like just a gap that is connected. Uh, right, so what we're gonna do next is now we need to build a uh, a cell complex. So I'm going to assume everything has the same height. We can obviously try to get the heights of the rooms from Revit and kind of like do different things. But for now, we're just going to use, uh, let's say, 3000 uh, millimeters just as a, something to, to illustrate how we extrude this. So I'm going to use the topologic translate. And I will feed it uh, 0 for the x, 0 for the y, and 3000 for the z. And feed it the topologies. So now we should have 
a new set of th uh, 31 wires just to uh, visualize them another topology dot geometry and there they are so the idea is that we want to loft through this two, these two sections and uh, create a, a set of cells and then make a cell complex right so um, we're going to make a list um, out of these two sets so we'll start with the one that is lower and then the one that is higher so now we have these uh, two lists of 62 wires right 0 1 and 0 and 1 so what we really need to do though is we need to send uh, pairs of these wires into the loft method so we have a loft method in topologic so just look for it it's called by loft and it takes a set of wires now you can't feed it those wires what you need to do is feed it uh, as I said pairs of wires so the first element of uh, list 0 with the first element of list 1 so how do we accomplish this you do a list dot transpose so list dot transpose kind of switches the rows to be columns and the columns to be rows it just kind of rotates it in a way so let's go ahead and see what that looks like so now we still have 62 wires but now they are organized in pairs exactly what we need so we can feed this directly into a cell utility and run it take a little bit of time not a lot actually and we have 31 cells so let's go ahead and uh, visualize this and these are the uh, the cells very clean everything is connected nicely there's a bit of a hole here I don't know what that is but that obviously did not come through I don't exactly know why I'll have to check it uh, right so but this can form a good cell complex so let's go ahead and look for uh, cell complex dot by cells and that will take just a little bit of time and now we have a cell complex so let's go ahead and visualize this one so what I'm gonna do is uh, visualize its edges first and give that here so those are the edges and then I'm going to visualize it uh, as a translucent uh, entity so I'm going to create a translucent color color by ARGB and give that 200 255 for red 0 for green and blue I could have used a, a kind of a color sample but that's okay here we go and there's something called by geometry color I always find this a bit tedious to do uh, I wish they would do something a bit nicer than this but that's how it is and then hide this one so that it doesn't uh, interfere with it and we'll see the final result here and there it is okay so this is now a cell complex I'm gonna make it slightly more transparent so what we have now is an entity called a cell complex which is uh, topologically connected so these cells in the cell complex know about each other so just to prove that I'm going to go ahead and create a graph so I'm gonna say uh, graph by topology and feed it the cell complex and I'm gonna do a, 
a couple of booleans uh, and I'll show you what I'll use them in a, in a second but before I do that let me go ahead and draw this graph so you need two steps for this one you need to get the topology out of this graph which gives you back a wire so this is a, a cluster I guess um, rather than a wire doesn't matter and then topology dot geometry and that will draw the actual dual graph for you so you'll see that they are all uh, connected correctly now if you don't like these lines coming outside because these are obviously just topological lines they're just connected centroid to centroid what you can do is you can say I want to go through the uh, shared topologies not not directly but just sh through the shared topologies so I'm gonna make a copy of these booleans I'm gonna set one to false and one to true so direct which means centroid to centroid is gonna be false and then via shared topologies is going to be true and then uh, let's go ahead and run it one more time to see the effect you see so now uh, it goes through the shared topologies which are these surfaces and then from there on to the centroid. So centroid to shared topology to centroid. And that's what it looks like. Okay, thank you for watching. So I hope um, you've enjoyed Wasim's presentation and it's enabled something that you can explore um, via the Topologic package. Um, definitely get in touch with him or myself if you're interested in learning more about Topologic and definitely check out um, their website at topologic.app um, and check out some of their learning resources. Um, I'd like to thank Wasim for actually you know, contributing to this presentation and um, just working with me to, to solve a really interesting set of problems. Um, I think we, we had a really good time and I hope that it, it reflects in, it, in our outcomes. Um, so the, the presentation will be on GitHub as always, um, and I guess if you're not already following and subscribing, um, feel free to do so. I make videos twice a week and aim to do so for a long time. And if anyone else ever wants to collaborate content with the channel, um, definitely get in touch. More than happy to host um, ideas and, and just collaborate as well if people are interested. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.